All right, gentlemen, welcome, and ladies, I should say. Today we're going to talk about how to solve problems regarding motion when we have velocity, displacement, and either we know the acceleration or we're looking for the acceleration. And again, with the, in all these cases, the acceleration must be constant. So there we go to the equation. For all these problems, we're looking for this type of equation where the displacement is equal to the initial velocity times time, because we want displacement plus one-half at squared, where a is acceleration, and we're looking for the uh, time, again, that squared. And we usually use this when we're finding acceleration, or we know the acceleration, and the displacement's known. Sometimes this term v sub i is, honestly, can change, because if, if it's zero, that thing goes away, or that we don't need to worry about it. So let's solve a problem with this. So we're looking at the speed of a small bottle rocket can vary. And here's the condition y. So the, this first part from here to here is basically describing what's happening, what we're looking at. We're looking at a rocket going up and stopping. And this is where we're going to have maximum velocity. Now we do know that we're looking for the acceleration, the average acceleration. We don't care about the final velocity. We do know it travels 24 meters, 12 meters, 12.4 meters, excuse me, in two seconds. So we're looking for a. So let's look at this equation. So, so we're looking for we're looking for displacement. We have acceleration, we have the initial velocity, and we're looking for time. Let's go back up here. So this last se last two sentences gives us all the information that we need. Actually, the last sentence is looking is telling us what we're looking for, acceleration. So we need A. We're looking for A. Our displacement is actually 12.4 meters. So x is 12.4 meters, so it's going a little high, not much, enough to clear the area of our heads before it goes boom. And we have a time in two seconds, so our total time, our final time, is two seconds, meaning our initial is going to be zero. So time is two. That's our initial velocity. Well, it hasn't really say except for right here. Suppose a rocket is launched from rest. That is telling me that my initial velocity is zero. So if we write the equation out, delta x is equal to uh, initial velocity times time plus 0 0.5 at squared. Okay. This looks like a long problem. I'm going to deal with the variables first. Now we're looking for we're looking for acceleration. That's what we're looking for. Now this term vi is zero, so this is, these two go away. So if I rewrite that down to x, we don't need to worry about this term since it's zero. Zero point five at squared. Now I'm going to solve for a. Again, you could plug in all the numbers and solve. That's fine. That's fine. As long as we get the same answer, I don't care how you do it. But what I do care is that you write everything down. Show me your work. Show me how you do things, because this is what I. This is what I'm looking for on the test. If you get the wrong answer, I'm going to count everything wrong. But if you do this and show me the work, you're going to get part of it. You will get some partial credit. So let's take get a by itself. Let's take. Divide both sides by time squared. Delta x over t squared. Now I have this bad habit. This is supposed to be delta t. Don't worry about it, folks. It's just different ways how people do things. A, multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of the 0.5. I'm going to come over here and let's plug in the numbers 2 times 12.4 over 2 squared is equal to a. Now on this, as we go through here, remember, the vi is 0, so this term goes away. We don't have to worry about it. 
and this drops, and now it's very easy algebra to get to this point. So 12.4 times 2 gives me 24.8 divided by 2 squared, which is 4. And I'm going to have 6.2 meters per second squared. And that will give me my acceleration. Now, let's look at, remember, displacement is meters, time is seconds. And we've got, so second time, second for second squared, and the units of match. This is the right answer, 6.2 meters per second squared. Now remember, make sure you work on these. If you have any questions, please see me after school or during Scott time. This is the end of the lecture.